What was the most influential presidential election in the modern era? Some say it was the 1964 election when the map flipped upside down. Some say it was the Reagan revolution that began in 1980. Some even say it was 2016 when Donald Trump shocked the entire world and won the presidency. But while each of these are extremely important, in my humble opinion, the most influential election in modern American politics happened in 1992. 1992, you may say? Why 1992? Well, let me explain. As many of you know, the 1992 presidential election had a unique and historic outcome. For those who are unfamiliar, an independent candidate named Ross Perot garnered an impressive 19% of the popular vote, which was remarkable for American politics. Even to this day, it's one of the largest vote shares an independent candidate has ever gotten. What made this even more significant was the identity of this independent candidate and what he represented. Ross Perot was a unique and fascinating figure who challenged the two-party system and ran as an outsider. Although he didn't win the election, the impact of his run was profound as it set the stage for future outsider candidates and sparked a revolt against the establishment we see today. People like Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump would later garner significant support due to the foundation laid by Perot's 1992 run. This has always led me to wonder, what if Perot won the 1992 election? What changes would have occurred? To answer this question, we first need to learn more about Ross Perot himself and his background. Ross Perot was born on June 27, 1930 in Texarkana, Texas. He was the son of a cotton broker and grew up in a modest home. Despite his humble beginnings, Pro showed an early talent for business and an entrepreneurial spirit. After serving in the U.S. Navy, Pro attended Texarkana Junior College and later Southern Methodist University, where he studied computer science and economics. After graduation, he went to work for IBM where he quickly rose through the ranks to become one of the company's top salespeople. In 1962, Pro left IBM to start his own company, Electronic Data Systems, EDS, which became a pioneer in the field of computer technology and data processing. Perot's business acumen and innovative approach to technology helped EDS grow into a global leader in the industry, with contracts with clients such as the U.S. government and major corporations. In addition to his business success, Pro was known for his political activism and philanthropy. He was a vocal critic of the Vietnam War and was involved in efforts to negotiate the release of American prisoners in the Southeast Asia. He also supported various charities and organizations focused on education, health care, and the environment. Perot's involvement in politics and public affairs continued to grow throughout the 1980s, as he became more vocal in his opposition to the federal deficit, trade policies, and other issues affecting the country. He gained a reputation as a straight-talking, no-nonsense outsider who was willing to challenge the status quo and the political establishment. So yeah, imagine Donald Trump. Four reasons exist for why Pro did so good in 1992. After all, getting 19% of the vote as an independent is practically a miracle in the modern era. The first thing was an itch existed by many Americans for something different, for someone that was outside the two-party establishment. The second major reason he did so good was, well, he was running against a Bush and a Clinton. I do not think anything else needs to be said for this one. Number three, money. The man was a billionaire and would buy up entire TV slots to get his message out to people. The fourth and last critical part of why Pro did so good was policy. Pro ran a thing such as being against NAFTA, wanting a strong border with Mexico, and balancing the budget. When you look at where Pro did best, it was clear the policy played a part. He did best in the Rockies, the Great Plains, and of course, the Industrial Rust Belt. Now the funny part is, he probably should have won the 1992 election. Now you may be asking, why do I say this? He was leading at multiple polls in the summer, but suddenly dropped out and only jumped back in in the middle of the fall. And even with such a late entry, he was able to get 19% of the vote. I think it is that time, though. I think it is time we ask the question. What if Pro did win the 1992 presidential election? In this timeline, Pro never drops out in the summer, and he maintains a lead which is very likely considering in real life he was able to get 19% of the vote in just two months of real campaigning. The real question is, what would the map look like? 
Well, thanks to Mill226 on Twitter, we got a, what a map could potentially look like using the polling data in the summer. As you can see, Perot essentially would sweep all the northern states. And you may notice in this timeline, Bush actually does better than Clinton, which kind of surprised me at first. But it does make sense when you look at the polling trends, as after Pro dropped out, many of the polls indicate that many of the Pro voters actually switched to Clinton. However, we aren't going to discuss a Pro hurt Bush or Clinton because that would be a video in itself, but it still fascinates me the data we got to show that Pro may have actually hurt Clinton in some areas. Now, this doesn't mean the map would be exactly like this. After all, it is all hypothetical. Likely, though, this is probably the closest we would get to a pro victory map as it is real polling data. We got adjusting the real life results we did get. Now, for congressional elections, just imagine nothing seriously changes as we do not have a major third party yet. And I cannot imagine anything really changing. So that means a Democrat majority in this House and the Senate. Well, pro is now president. Now what? One of the biggest changes I can envision happening right away is most likely the death of NAFTA, or at the very least a watered down version that wouldn't have hammered the Rust Belt like it did in our timeline. This single change probably would be the most influential policy change in the entire pro presidency as NAFTA was one of the biggest disasters the United States has ever signed on to when it relates to trade. You could argue all you want about free trade being good or not. The fact is nearly every single study of NAFTA showed the Rust Belt got crushed economically as countless jobs were shipped to Mexico. I am not saying without NAFTA the Rust Belt would be in a golden age. After all, the Rust Belt wasn't decayed beforehand, but NAFTA destroyed what was still a fairly stable, if fallen, industrial base, and the effects of it were felt even to this day. The Rust Belt would be in a significantly better situation than it currently is, as so many jobs most likely wouldn't have been shipped out so fast like it was in our timeline. Now, another significant change that not enough people talk about is the Supreme Court. After all, Clinton was able to nominate two justices in his first two years. Clinton nominated Ginsburg and Breyer for the two retiring judges, and I doubt Pro would have had two judges retire like that. He probably would have gotten at most one judge. Who would he pick? It's hard to tell. Pro never really specified a specific candidate, from my knowledge, but it probably would have been a more centrist judge that wasn't bound to a specific party. Now, I won't go into any specifics for cases that would or weren't change, but you could probably imagine at least a few landmark cases that were 5-4 in the 90s potentially changing. Another notable change I could see outside these two is potentially a watered down healthcare reform being passed. Clifton tried something similar but failed miserably at it. It is possible if Perot proposed some kind of watered-down reform that it does pass, but that is hard to tell considering Clinton could get his healthcare bill passed. The last serious change that could seriously be talked about is related to the budget, which in our timeline, we did get a surplus in the late 90s under Clinton. Now with Perot focusing more on the budget than other candidates, it is likely we would get some kind of surplus probably in 95 or 96. It's fairly possible Clinton was able to get it, Pro probably would too. And that is probably what would change between a Bill Clinton presidency and a Ross Pro presidency in the first two to three years that is significant enough to be mentioned. But you could probably see some smaller changes happen like an executive order, but that is not big enough as these other changes that I do not believe they need to be mentioned in this video. Now, some of you may say that it is impossible for Pro to get anything done since he wasn't with either party. He wasn't a Republican, he wasn't a Democrat, he was an independent for now. And that is where it is likely that that's actually wrong in this case. The reason for that is simple. Back in the 90s, polarization, which it still was an issue, wasn't anywhere near as bad as today. I mean, Clinton was able to work with congressional Republicans to pass significant bills such as a balanced budget and other related bills. And pro being an independent may actually benefit him, as he can work with both parties to come to an agreement where both sides get something out of it. Plus, both parties still had significant factions outside the party norms, such as conservative Democrats or liberal Republicans. So it is entirely possible, even without being a party, for now, he would be able to pass some bills that both sides agreed to since he was an independent and he could probably work with both ways. With that out of the way, what about the near future?
Now, the 1994 midterm and the near future after a pro presidency are both such massive topics, they need to cut into future parts. So you can expect parts two and three in the near future. The reason I am doing this is because these two topics are too massive just to condense into a couple minutes. They each need their own video focusing on what happens in a midterm with an independent president? What happens after this independent president eventually leaves office? Anyways, everybody, thank you so much for the patience on this video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you enjoyed the mini series and stay tuned because parts two and three they're going to be interesting. If you did enjoy, please like, share, subscribe, and join the channel today. I appreciate any of the support you guys give me. It is phenomenal. And stay tuned because parts two and three, things are going to change. Until next time, I hope you enjoyed. We'll see you guys in the next video or live stream. Godspeed to all of you.